Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I want to check in with you guys. I'm filming this on Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all my golfing dads out there. As the shirt says, chill dad vibes. You know the deal. I wanted to do a follow up to my 2022 what's in the bag. At the end of that video, I knew I was going to make some changes with my woods. How many changes? I had no idea. But I do want to emphasize that getting fit for the right clubs for you is the most important part of this process. Take the ego out of it. Stop thinking you can buy off the rack. Stop assuming what your swing speeds are. That's just something that it's hard to tell without the benefits of monitoring and having a professional take a look at your swing, see if there's anything that you need to fundamentally change before you go into a change of clubs. I did that. So I had an old tailor-made M2 hybrid that I knew I was going to change out. I wasn't getting the yardage that I expected out of it. It was an older piece of technology and I wanted to upgrade. So I went into a Dick Sporting Goods for a fitting, looking for a driving iron, something that would adapt well to the firm and fast fairways here in Texas as we dry out in the summer. Thought it would be a wonderful club in addition to my bag. However, going in, getting fit, realizing that it was hard for me to consistently hit the club keep the speed up enough to get that height and keep that ball in the air with enough spin and so i ended up going with a hybrid and it was a wonderful fitting experience um, we got in i hit a few shots tested out some different shafts and ended up with the ping g425 hybrid with the tensei orange shaft and let me tell you this is the shaft for me I have enjoyed hitting this club. Prior to the change out, I was getting around 200 yards with my hybrid. I went into the fitting wanting to get about 215 out of the hybrid, create some space between my four iron and my three hybrid. Again, I had some bunching at the top of my bag as well as the bottom of the bag, which I'll get to as well. And so the fitting was perfect. On the monitors, I was getting 215 up and down i knew the club felt great in hand the shaft flex was perfect um, i'm a stiff um, and so again i knew i was going to get what i needed here we are part of the way into the golf season and i'm averaging about 220 with this club i can sneak it out there a little bit longer particularly off a tee it has been a great addition to my bag but that also got me motivated to continue going um, i had been playing a nike hybrid uh, Vaporfly from way back in the day, still in my bag, and it was a time for a change, time to upgrade technology. So again, went back to the Ping family, decided that it was something that I wanted to continue, um, you know, expanding my bag, love the feel of that hybrid. And so I was at a course one day, ran across the G425 Max, had the stock Ping shaft in it. I did not love it. I played a couple of rounds with it just to see how I would like it and I hated it. So I took the Tensei Blue out of my Vapor Max, added the ping adapter and it's been an amazing club. Again, the 425 Max from Ping, you know, it's a forgiving club. It's a little bit bigger down by the ball. Um, I love it. Just a clean look up top as well. It has the same look as that hybrid. Again, the Tensei Blue Shaft has been amazing which I love the stability of that shaft. So when I got fit for the orange, um, I loved it. And it was a good addition that I think made sense for me. Eventually, I think I will end up putting the orange into this uh, club as well. But right now I'm getting similar yardages that I was with the Nike, no losses, gained a few, and it's straighter. So, you know, a lot less variability. And if you can keep it straight, that takes a lot of the guessing game out of it and to keep up the distance, A1. Um, so keeping with the theme of the woods and changes, um, loved the feel of the Tensei Orange. I felt like it was the right shaft for me and I carried that with my driver. So I did not change my driver head at all. I've kept that the same. So I'm playing the PXG 0811 XT driver. Love the head. I was playing the Tensei Blue in this, um, but again, in the last month or so, I ended up purchasing the Tensei Orange, and I have picked up some additional yardage in addition to 
some speed training, which I'll also talk about that here in my bag as well. Something that I'm not as consistent with, but early in the off season, I started doing some speed training uh, with the stick that I found on Amazon and it's been a great addition. Um, I was able to pick up eight quick yards and that's even kind of going through the off season cooler temps. I was able to see some distance gains right off the bat. Adding in that Tensei orange shaft to my driver head, I have gotten my driver average up to 275, 276. I'll put it up here on the screen. That's major. When I was uh, measuring last year with the Arco system, I was getting about 258 average. To be able to pick up 15 plus yards with some speed training, in addition to a shaft change and no other swing changes to my game, I feel like that's an amazing jump and it has contributed to me playing some of the best golf of my life. This little um, swing trainer with three weights, I'll zoom in here. You can see the separation there. So there's three weights on this system, just a shaft with the grip on it. And on the Amazon website, this probably costs like 30 something bucks when I purchase it. it. Gives you a training guide on how to use this. They recommend doing it every other day, which I was committed to early on, but just lost the, the fire in the off season. However, the additional distance has stuck and the additional swing speed has stuck. And I can definitely see that with my irons as well as with my woods. So those big changes to the upper part of my bag have paid dividends as I've gotten a little bit straighter with my three wood, definitely more reliable with the hybrid and can use that at all different parts of the course, whether that's off the tee, in the fairway, out of some dodgy lies, off the fringe cut of the green, it's a super versatile club and I've appreciated having a reliable hybrid in my bag as well as getting some distance with the driver. That's a big separator. When you can add 15 to 20 yards to your game and you're hitting you know, one or two clubs less into a green, that's gonna improve your scoring automatically. Again, I emphasize, go get fit for the clubs that you have in your bag. I haven't made many changes to my irons. I'm still playing the PXG 0311 wedges in the 58 54 and 50 degree i love these they've been super reliable i love them up and down around greens different situations tons of spin off the face of these clubs i'm a high spin player anyway so i don't need a lot of help they have been great in terms of distance control consistency i don't catch any flyers they perform the exact way that i would expect them to perform and overall, I've kept my irons the same. I was fit the previous year for the TaylorMade P790s, the most latest version to these clubs. Um, I have the KBS Tour Flight and 120 stiff. I love the TaylorMade P790s and they have been a great iron. Um, there are some flyer lies that you can catch with these clubs. I I see this particularly around the mid iron range from the eight, seven, and six. Coming out of some lies that are not fairway cut, you see some additional yardage, um, but nothing that's overly concerning. I feel like that can happen with any uh, golf club these days, but I love them. I have been striking them very well, again, with that additional speed after the training. It's been great, and using these irons have definitely tightened up my game. Again, I was playing the Nike Pro combos, and these were an upgrade. Um, most definitely, of course, again, got fit, shafts that work best for me, um, and, and they have been great. However, there's one qualm that I've had with them, and that's at the very bottom of the bag, and that was with the pitching wedge. I never liked the look of the pitching wedge. It looked a little bit chunky on the top end. Nothing crazy, and most people wouldn't care, but the biggest thing that I saw from the TaylorMade uh, P790 uh, pitching wedge was that I was not getting the distance that I expected. Um, I had some issues initially with the shafts, getting the right ones um, throughout the set. They were having some trouble getting KBS shafts stocked. I don't know what happened in the you know manufacturer process, but you know I kept trying. I figured it was just user error, but again, the look of it did not satisfy me either. I ended up continuing to shop and look for the right pitching wedge for me, even if that was outside of the set. Hey y'all, it's me, live from the editing bay. I just wanted to jump in on this section of the video. As I was editing and just kind of randomly scrolling through Instagram, I ran across this article from My Golf Spy regarding my choice to put in a pitching wedge outside of my set. 
who knew this was a subject that bothered other people or people were thinking about but i'll link it down below it definitely validated my feelings and the reasons why i chose to do this although they made some different justifications for making this choice it's something that i think a lot of folks should consider to provide some more versatility and higher performance out of their golf sets knowing that i did not love the way that this looked down by the ball um, yes, I could have gone back, got it adjusted, strengthened the loft or whatnot. But again, the yardage was very close to my gap wedge. They were playing about a yard apart from each other. And so I ended up just continuing to search and found a wedge on the PXG website this year that I really liked the look of and ended up picking up. You know, pit the shaft that I had been playing in my other tailor-made wedges into this wedge. And it's the uh, 0317, um, you know, forged model. This came out of the set. They do have a full set of this wedge. And I just love the look of it. Down by the ball, you know, I like a thin top line on my wedges and this fits the bill. In addition to the weighting on the back side of the club, I just think it looks very sharp. Again, goes with my other wedges. And so, you know, it really kept some continuity in my set. You know, I was able to get a shaft that I liked as well. And I was able to separate my pitching wedge from my gap wedge. And I feel that I can reliably hit this club. If I'm maxed out, I can go above 130, just, you know, in good conditions. But as a stock yardage, I can hit this 125 reliably. And I'm really enjoying that. And that's been able to shore up and fill in any gaps that I've had in my bag. And again, I reiterate, playing some of the best golf that I've ever played. And I think, I feel like that's a result of getting fit for clubs that are fit for me and that fit my swing speed and swing characteristics. The only other change that I've made is actually a retreat to something from the past. And, you know, I thought I was gonna go completely without Nike in my bag. I put my old method 0013 back in play old reliable um you know i feel like i was playing the tailor-made spider tour and i had played that club for a couple of years and but i had seen some slumps with my putting again just the measurements and stats coming over from arcos really told me that putting was the weak part of my game and so in an effort to shore that up i went back to old reliable the only reason i switched back in the day was because i was just a heavy club changer at the time but this has been able to shave a couple of strokes and steady up my putting game. Um, that's the next step for me is to go in for an official putter fitting and see what best works for my game, uh, what mess with the weighting and all of that jazz. So again, I reiterate, if you have never been fit for clubs, I guarantee you will shave strokes off of your game, gain yardage. It is very hard if you've been shopping off the rack to get something with your own knowledge that's gonna give you your best game. Again, you can make adjustments with your swing. You may create some swing faults if you don't go into a club that fits you. So go see a professional, reasonable cost. Most often you're paying between 50 and $100 for a fitting, as well as that going towards the cost of your purchase. So don't be a hard head, put the ego aside, go get your ass fit for some clubs. Probably about 30 minutes after Filming the video that you're about to see, I realized that I didn't discuss my ball choice, which is a huge component of your game. I have a video that was kind of based on the My Golf Spy ball uh, performance test from last year, saying how important the golf ball is. I'll link that video above as well. But just something that I think a lot of people overlook. A lot of y'all have the shag bags going on and haven't been tested for the golf ball that best fits you or your swing speed and i think these things definitely matter my ball of choice typically i will go with the titleist avx or with the titleist pro v1 just depending on what's available i know there's been some golf ball shortages in places i typically shop but those are balls that you can usually get readily but another ball that i've chosen to pick up on and also save some dollars is the vice pro plus this ball in terms of construction and performance Definitely feels like a Pro V1 or the AVX. Feels very soft off the face of the putter as well as your woods and irons. I will say the major difference is 
that this ball typically does mark up a little bit more than you would see with other premium golf balls. When I'm paying $28 to $33 a dozen, I did get a multi-pack discount at the beginning of the season and, you know, will last me through the rest of this year very, very easily. But I think that's the one takeaway from, you know, a premium ball is that these can mark up out of a bunker or, you know, grooves from a wedge. But it's minimal, all things considered. And I'm willing to sacrifice that $20 per dozen for, you know, some minor scuffs here and there. Um, you know, you don't feel bad about tossing it out and, and putting a new ball in play once it comes in contact with a rough surface, cart path, whatever the case may be. But in terms of performance and being able to score with this ball, I see no negligible difference, particularly with the fresh ball out of the packet. So consider, you know, a off-brand ball. There's so many out there. Again, mine is the Vice Pro Plus. And I, you know, mark it with a straight line for putting purposes. Helps me line up the ball on the green and then focus on my pace at that point. Just wanted to throw that part in. Ball selection is super important to your game. Do not overlook it. If you have the opportunity to go get fit for your ball, I really suggest that you do so as well. We'll be back with more videos. Come check us out. We do lives every Sunday, par for the course, the Bearder Bros Golf Show, live streaming every Sunday. Check us out. We got a lot of content coming. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.